Hello, and welcome to say episode four of St. Luke's Gallery. The purpose of this site is to share my appreciation of sacred art with you, and hopefully persuade you to look at art in general in a new perspective. The Christmas and the subsequent Epiphany seasons have come to a close, but before we enter into the Lenten season, I'd like to hold on to our Lord in his early years with a work of art that celebrates his foster father on earth, St. Joseph. And after careful evaluation of many worthy works of art, I've set it on St. Joseph with the Infant Jesus by Guido Reni. As we've done in the past three episodes, let's start with a brief background on Guido Reni. He was born in 1575 in the papal state of Bologna, which is part of modern-day Italy. An early painter of the Baroque style, he was famous for classical renderings of both Christian as well as mythological subjects. He apprenticed with the Flemish painter, Denis Calvert, at the age of 10, and then was later influenced by the Caracci family of Bologna, and I think that we can see those two styles rendered here in his self-portrait. He also had several pretty important commissions for Pope Paul V, and then he died in 1642 in his hometown of Bologna. Before we get to the main event, I'll share some of Rennie's other works, and some of them will look familiar to some of you. That's because many of his works were worthy enough to be replicated in our churches. Step into a church built well before Vatican II, and that survived the modernist so-called reforms, and you may very well see reproductions of Rennie's works, like for example these two. On the left we have the obvious, aptly titled Baptism of Christ from 1622. This resides in Vienna's Kunsthistorisches Museum, and on the right, the also aptly titled Christ Giving the Keys to St. Peter. This one is in Paris's Louvre Museum and dates back to 1625. Both are very good works of art in the realist style. I think Rennie did a great job with the skin tones and in the textures of the clothing, which, for those of you who like to dabble in oils, can be quite challenging to achieve. My only criticism with both of these paintings are the excess people. The angels on the left and the people on the right behind Our Lord in St. Peter should, in my opinion, have been a bit more muted. Their prominence is a bit of a distraction from the vocal points of Jesus and St. John, and again with St. Peter, but that's my two cents. If you're a fan of sacred classical art, you have no doubt seen the painting on the left, the Archangel Michael Trampling Satan. It's without question one of Rennie's more famous works, and has been reproduced over and over throughout the centuries. It's certainly a dramatic depiction from the Book of the Apocalypse, and a great work of art to meditate upon. Note how St. Michael is rather youthful, and of a smaller stature compared to the muscular Satan. And why is Satan such a bodybuilder type anyway, instead of some hideous monster? Rennie knew his subject matter, and he executed I think appropriately. Satan was of the highest rank of angels, and was cast out of heaven by Michael, who was in one of the lower ranks, the Archangel Choir. That answers that question, and Reddy's painting reinforces the possibility of the impossible being possible. On the right, this one is probably not so familiar to those who are not of the Roman Catholic faith. St. Philip Neri in Ecstasy dates back to 1614 and is on display in the Oratory Church of Gesia Nuova in Rome. It's a great execution of the saint and especially his garments. Seriously, that looks so much like velvet with gold embroidery, you can almost feel it in your hands. St. Philip Neri suffered much in this world, but he kept his focus on what was above in our true homeland, heaven. I love Rennie's distant yet intimate connection between St. Philip Neri and Our Lady in this exquisite work of art. Here's a couple of paintings of the saints from Rennie that I'd like to include before we get to St. Joseph. On the left, we have St. James the Great from 1636 to 38, and on the right, St. Cecilia from 1606. Both are similar in their executions, and yet quite different in their time periods. St. James is pretty much right for a man from that period in history in regards to his appearance and his clothing, but St. Cecilia lived in the years 200 to 230 AD, and that contradicts the more Renaissance-style clothing we see, as well as her violin. Both paintings, however, capture the love these saints had for what is above, rather than what is here below in this valley of tears. And that should comfort us as we meditate. 
and I encourage all of you to meditate upon these great works of sacred art. In the previous slide, we saw St. James and St. Cecilia looking towards heaven. Here in the focus of this episode, we see St. Joseph focusing on heaven on earth, Jesus Christ in the flesh in his arms. On one hand, this is the near-perfect depiction of the bonding of an infant to his earthly father, while at the same time, adoration by an earthly figure, St. Joseph to the Word made flesh. Let's zoom in a bit and see the father-son intimacy that Reddy depicted here. Note the intense eye contact between the two, as well as the Christ child holding the flowers while touching St. Joseph's beard. You get the sense that I am yours and you are mine is the message here between these two. This next focus is a bit blurry, but it's worth noting. Off to the side, we can see Our Lady in what appears to be a cave, and by some interpretations of the Nativity, it happened in a cave and not in a stable. We can assume that Mary has just ended a conversation with a departing angel that we see exiting. I know it's blurry, but note Our Lady's hands if you can. They seem to be pretty busy. It's almost as if she's packing something together. Could this have been a painting to depict the moments before the flight into Egypt? Reddy isn't here for an interview, but it's a worthy moment of meditation on how St. Joseph was put in charge with protecting the child Jesus from the slaughter of the innocents by Herod. It's worthy to note that this wasn't the only depiction of our Lord and his earthly father, Guido Reni painted. Twenty years later, he produced St. Joseph and the Christ Child. It's another great work of art, and there are quite a lot of similarities but to me it's not as strong as the original. I personally prefer the way Jesus is touching Joseph's beard rather than the Christ child holding that circular thing. And the sidebar scene of Our Lady with the angel in the earlier version, that definitely adds more interest. I think it's safe to assume that Reddy's depiction of St. Joseph and Our Lord inspired his later work, St. Matthew with the angel. No words are necessary. I'm just going to pause here for a minute and let you meditate on these two fine examples of sacred art. Before I conclude, I'd like to end with a prayer to St. Joseph. I don't think I need to go into detail about the state of the world right now. It's not good. And there is no political situation to this mess. None. St. Joseph, according to the teachings of the Church, is the head of the Holy Family and the terror of demons. Let that sink in for a minute. Jesus' earthly father had so much respect that God himself was subject to him. Furthermore, as the foster father of Jesus, St. Joseph is automatically a force that scares the hell out of demons. That should give us all hope, and so let's end this episode with the following prayer. To thee, O blessed Joseph, we fly in our tribulation. And after imploring the help of thy holy spouse, with confidence we ask also for thy intercession. By the affection which united thee to the Immaculate Virgin, Mother of God, and by the paternal love with which thou didst embrace the child Jesus, we beseech thee to look kindly upon the inheritance which Jesus Christ acquired by his precious blood, and with thy powerful aid to help us in our needs. Protect, most careful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen people of Jesus Christ, Keep us, loving Father, from all pestilence of error and corruption. From thy place in heaven, be thou mercifully with us, most powerful protector, in this warfare with the powers of darkness. And as thou didst once rescue the child Jesus from imminent danger of death, so now defend the Holy Church of God from the stairs of the enemy and from all adversity. Guard each of us by the constant patronage, so that sustained by the example, we may live a holy life, die a holy death, and obtain the everlasting happiness of heaven. Amen. St. Joseph, Ora Pro Nobis. And that concludes episode four of St. Luke's Gallery. Thank you for watching, and I invite you to come back again for additional presentations. Until then, please visit stlukesgallery.com and also the channels on BitChute, Vimeo, Rumble, or YouTube. I'll have another episode in a few weeks. 
In the meanwhile, if you have a question or a comment, please email me at mail at stlukesgallery.com. Thank you again, and may God bless you.